right. So we have uh, 15 minutes of Q&A time for this year. I really hope we don't need it all. Um, but we will start. Uh, we'll start with uh, start with a uh, general a general one. Um, this is for both groups. Uh, what is your group doing to reach out to local fan groups, both con running and non con running, beyond what you just did here? Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, in your region to encourage them to uh, to uh, work for and possibly attend your convention. Start with San Jose. Oh sure, we have to pass the microphone back. Honestly, right now we are primarily campaigning to voters because campaigning to people who don't vote doesn't win you an election. That said, well, and campaigning to, campaigning to people who may vote and trying to convert them to voters, I see Crystal over there with her hand up, and yeah, it, turning people into voters is important, and campaigning to people who are not, who are, who are uh, new voters, potential new voters, uh, we are doing a lot of outreach with our local convention communities, including some that a lot of people here wouldn't traditionally think of. Uh, next weekend, we're going to be at GX3, Everybody Games, the uh, third evolution of uh, GamerX, the uh, LGBT alphabet soup uh, gaming convention, which mostly we're going to just to go because this is two weeks in a row of actually campaigning. Um, we have strong connections with our local furry conventions, which I'm always surprised when I find people from the furry conventions showing up at Worldcon and I didn't realize that they were doing it. I'm not surprised with all the people who I already know do. Um, we, are ha we have strong connections with our local general science fiction conventions, with our local science conferences. We, our facility is several, only a few blocks away from San Jose Library and we are looking to leverage that for literary events. So, Thank you. All right. Oh, who did I miss? We're also active members in both of the Bay Area costuming groups. Several of the costume dance groups, we have connections in the SCA. And um, what? And of course, there is the infamous BASFA Dynamo, the Bay Area Science Fiction Association, which really is Bay Area. We have people right. coming from all over the place. Let's to give New do Orleans some time. Parliamentary recreation. Yeah. Well, the, um, our bid emerged from local fandom. We've been introducing many fans who've been out of Worldcon to the idea of the World Science Fiction Convention, to what we're going to do ever since we first announced. The, our um, home convention, um, ContraFlow, actually, this logo is um, part of our, um, our home convention's logo. It, it, it's inspired by it. The, so when this, when the decision is made, if we win, our, our bid, when it turns into a convention, will emerge from local science fiction. So um, that's one of the reasons why we have um, two co-chairs here. We have a local co-chair who um, has run the local, the local general science fiction convention, and we have a co-chair who um, has m most of the connections outside of our, um, outside of New Orleans. And we're going to bring this together and make it something that is both New Orleans and Worldcon. All right, um, I'm going to keep it with me for a second and ask, the, ask a question on the same topic differently to each side. Uh, starting with uh, San Jose, we'll just go back and forth. Um, in your FAQ, uh, you, between the two hotels that you've listed, uh, I believe the count for peak rooms is about 600, uh, 350 in one hotel and 250 in the other. Uh, so the question is, what are your plans to expand that should you win the vote? That's our peak room commitment, not the number of peak rooms available. Okay. We have, we already have contracts with two, with two hotels attached to the convention center for a total of around 800 rooms attached to the convention center. We have additional hotels, two across the street, across different streets from the convention center, and one half a block away that we are negotiating for additional space. Thank you. Uh, and then on the New Orleans side of the world, uh, 
the, uh, the FAQ has the HRC listing at about 1,300 total rooms, if I read that right, uh, between rooms and suites. Uh, but in the FAQ on, on your ability for peak, you say up to 1,800 peak, and I'm wondering how you get there. Are there other hotels that you talk to that are not the HRC that, you're, that, that are included in that? Yes, the initial information we got from the CVB included a large number of other hotels. Uh, altogether, it totals up about 1,800. But there's something like 20 hotels within a short distance of the Holiday, um, Holiday Inn. Uh, Hyatt Regency, the Holiday Inn is one of the close ones. And uh, next door to the Hyatt Regency is a office building that's being converted to Hyatt House. We don't know how many rooms are going to be there, but um, 139. Uh, 139 rooms. But it'll be attached through Skybridge. So we'll even have more, we'll have more than 1,200 just with two connecting buildings plus whatever overflow we need. Okay. And by near my, nearby, he means within five minutes walk. Okay. All right. Um, do you have one you want to go to next or I will do this one next. Uh, this was for San Jose. Uh, I think this came out of the fact. When will the ballroom expansion be done and what will the capacity be? Oh, the ballroom expansion is done and has been done for over a year. And I happen to have the numbers sitting in front of me. Um, the new grand ballroom, which takes up the entire space that the old San Jose Library did before they joined with the San Jose State University Library, is 35,000 square feet. Um, with maximum theater seating capacity in a space of 3,900 seats, um, I expect we would carve out a little bit more stage and backstage than that. But that's what we've got for main event space in our convention center. Um, there, is also, there is also an additional grand ballroom that's, I believe, 22,000 square feet. We have a lot of space for main events. And the new ballroom is gorgeous. And, and I may have just missed it, so repeat for me. What's the seating capacity for like Masquerade and Hugo's? The maximum theater seating for that space is 3,900 people. Okay, and the so, same question in New Orleans. For your, yeah, seating main events, for your main, main event seating space. capacity. Yeah, the largest ballroom is just under 50,000 square feet. So I would guess that we could seat over 4,000 people. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, this is, a, again, a question for both of us, and it leads on to an add-on. So what, what is the expected weather for the season that you're voting, or that you're bidding in your cities? We'll start this time with New Orleans. Okay. Well, you know, it will be hot. Um, it will be humid. humid. And it will be indoors. And it will be indoors with air conditioning. And if you choose to go outside, we have a um, streetcar which runs right down in front of the, um, the hotel. Um, down, to, um, down to Canal Street, you can go to, at that point, you can go to the French Quarter, you can go up to the New Orleans Museum of Art, and it will be worth it. Is it Oh, no, it's not named Desire. Um, it's named Loyola. <laughs> That's just wrong. Yes. Yeah. Our average highs in the middle of August are mid-80s Fahrenheit with a regular, unless the marine layer doesn't come in, 20-some degree drop in the evening. Um, so it's actually nice weather for formal wear for Hugo's in the evening, nice weather for casual the rest of the day, um, and again, we are not going to be entirely in the same building. You may, depending on which hotel you're at, have to go outdoors. Or if you want to go out and get food, you may want to go out, outdoors to get something other than a hotel restaurant. And it will be fabulous weather for that. All right. So this question is a little on, 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 of a curveball, and it's for New Orleans. Um, you are, in your dates, according to the National Weather Service, in hurricane season. Yes, we are. Will you have a formal disaster plan? And if so, how will you make people aware of it? Our, our plan is simply this. If New Orleans is under a mandatory evacuation order, we will evacuate. Um, we will have no choice. The, um, and then we will work with the hotel and others to reschedule if possible. The, um, the, for, the good thing about a hurricane is that you see it coming. The, um, you know it's coming weeks before. Virtually every Worldcon in the 
um, Gulf South, in the, in the south and on the east, is in a hurricane zone, and it's in hurricane season. The um, Orlando had a hurricane, a major hurricane, for Magicon in 92, a few weeks before, and they held their convention. San Antonio is open to hurricanes. As we know, New York City, as late as December, can get hit by a hurricane. If there's a hurricane, we will leave, because that's what we have to do. All right. Um, fair enough. Uh, moving on to two questions for San Jose. Uh, the first, uh, somebody submitted the questions, so, but it's in the FAQ, so I'm just going to read the answer because somebody in the room is interested. Uh, what are the dates for the San Jose bid? The dates on, listed on the FAQ are Thursday, August 16th through Monday, August 20th. And they're also right on the front page of the web page. Yep. All right. Next, next, question. next question is someone who apparently had a difficulty doing this because it wasn't working for them, is uh, getting a friend membership online. Is that Somebody, possible? Is that possible? Oh, yes, it's possible. You can register. Okay. If, if you are already registered with the convention, it's easy to buy an additional uh, membership for a friend. Um, if you are not planning on buying a pre-support, but you're buying a pre-support for a friend, that may be a little bit more complicated and we I, should talk. I think, I think uh, they're talking friend level, like friend, friend of the bid level. level. Friend yeah. of the bid? Is that oh, possible through the it's website? It's a ticky box. It's a ticky box. It's so a ticky box. You can do. So you somebody can, missed a ticky box on the website. Yeah. If you if okay. you are on our website, if you are on a website, there are links from each of the classes of pre supports. Okay. Uh, pre support, pre oppose, friend of bid, any of, enemy of bid, and venture capitalist. Okay. Um, and if you go directly to if if somehow or another you get a link directly to the um, to the registration service instead of going through our website, it's a radio button. All right, um, so uh, you covered some of this, this is for New Orleans, you covered some of this in your bid presentation, uh, but for many people, uh, when they think of New Orleans, they understand that there is liquor, and they understand that there are beads, and they know what those mean. Right. Outside of those things, if they venture out from near your, near your site, what can they find? They can find some of the best restaurants in the world. They can find the um, National World War II Museum within a few blocks away. They can find the historic French Quarter and the um, St. Charles Streetcar, which is on the National Register of Historic Places with beautiful architecture. They can find the New Orleans Museum of Art, which um, they can get to using the Canal Street Streetcar, which is right up by City Park. They can find the, um, they, they can go out and they can register in the hotel for swamp tours and they can go out and um, tour the swamp. They can um, experience Cajun music and jazz and um, a, a entire world. Pat, they, they, they can go on the steamboat Natchez and, um, and take a cruise up and down the, um, the Mississippi. There are many, many, many things to do in New Orleans. Um, if you know anyone who's been there, you'll know that um, people come to visit again and again and again. Now, I've lived in New Orleans my entire life, and to a certain extent, when you live in a place, you don't necessarily appreciate it from the standpoint of a visitor. But from my friends that I um, that 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 come, I mean, that's it, it's a new world for them. So yes, there are much more than beads and booze. All anymore. right, we're going to need you to stop there to give us time for one last question for both of you. Randy? All right, someone has asked about scooter rental and the availability, but wait, I'm adding a layer to it. What's the terrain look like for uphill, downhill conditions, the sidewalks, cuts for the curbs, so you can get in and out, things like that? We'll start with uh, New Orleans. The, um, yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Oh, the, um, the, the advantage to being in a brand new hotel, um, a brand new convention center, is is fully ADA compliant. Um, it, there are wide hallways, there are big doors, um, there are um, ADA um, uh, hotel rooms. It is not a, an older hotel that has been retrofitted to be ADA compliant. And yes, and in the whole area, yes. Uh, we are a valley floor, we are flat. If you want something that's not flat, you don't have to go too far. Our uh, light rail system is roll-on, no lifts necessary, scooter capacity, power chair capacity, wheelchair capacity. 
Um, our convention center is actually, again, quite accessibility friendly. It hosts the Bay Area Accessibilities Expo. If it wasn't, they would be somewhere else. Um, the, and like I said, we, we have been meeting with other organizations who are using the same facilities we are to see how they are handling accessibility. I mean, curb cuts everywhere, the, uh, bumpy, the, the little bumpy uh, curb cuts that people either love or hate depending on who they are. Okay. Um, it's California, we've got lots of regs to make us do this. Okay, uh, that hits the end of Q&A time for the 2018 bids and I thank you guys very much.